this tutorial I'm going to show you how to prepare your crochet work for a border. Usually when I do a border I like to make the um, stitches really nice and even all the way round so that I have an even playing field when it comes to actually adding a border. And the way that I do that is to add a round of double crochet which is a UK term, US that is known as single crochet all the way around my work so that I know that when I'm working into the stitches um, I can work nice and evenly. Now some people get confused with this because it's easy to do on the top and the bottom of your work because you have your stitches there but a lot of people get confused of what to do down your raw edges or your row ends. So that's what I'm going to be going through with you today. Usually as well for this I would use this uh, same colour yarn so I'll show you how to get started with that in just a moment um, but just bear that in mind I'm actually going to change colour so you can see better how I'm working but I recommend that you do this round of double crochet in the same colour that you have done your work or a complementing colour if you are using um, different colours throughout your work. Another thing that I'm going to point out is I'm going to be showing you how to work in different stitches. So these three rows here are treble crochets, which are US double crochets. These three rows are UK half trebles, which is US half doubles. And then these four rows here are UK double crochets, which is US single crochets. As always, I'm going to leave a link in the description box below to the blog post where you can find all of this information written down if you prefer. You'll also find a pinnable image, so simply go onto this video, click show more or the downward arrow if you're on a mobile device and you'll find all of that information there. I would love it if you give this video a thumbs up, leave me a comment because I love to read them and also click that subscribe button and the bell button to be kept up to date with all of my latest videos. Okay, so as I say, you would ordinarily use the same colour yarn for this first round of your border, preparing for your border. And what we would do in this case is chain up one, and now we're ready to start work along the row ends, just here, all this raw edge. But because I want you to be able to see what I'm doing, I'm going to go ahead and just um, snip off my yarn like so and then attach a new colour, a contrasting colour so that you can see a little bit better. So I'm going to put this in the same place as where my last stitch was. Chain up one and now you can see a little bit better. Now if you find that once you have done this method that your work is um, still not sitting right you might want to experiment by going down half a hook size because uh, that can sometimes help with making the, your work lay flat but that's going to be down to your personal preference and to your personal tension. Okay so we're starting off in the corner here. Um, because this is where we would carry on our stitches. You have a couple of options when it comes to corners, which I'm going to talk about first of all. This will be totally down to personal preference and it will also depend on what kind of look you're going for at the end of your work. So you can either have in each of your corners three stitches so that you can work um, into that middle stitch for the corner and you won't have a gap or you could do something like double crochet chain one double crochet so as I say that's going to be totally down to your preference I'm going to work three stitches in the corner for this demonstration uh, but have a play around with it and see what you feel you prefer so first of all I'm going to do this um, chain one which does not count as a stitch and then into that very same stitch, I'm going to do two double crochets, one and two. If you want to, you can mark that corner stitch um, with a stitch marker, just so that you can be extra sure which one it's going to be. 
When we finish off this whole round, I'm going to do another double crochet into that first stitch and then join into the corner seam and that will create um, our corner. So there will be three stitches in there eventually. Now what we're going to do is work down this raw edge and this is where people do sometimes get confused. So we have just worked into the end of the row of our first double crochet. Remember I say I have four double crochet rows here. And what we want to do, double crochet rows are actually really easy because we're simply going to work one double crochet into the end of each row end. So we've already done one in this first row because that classes as the corner. Now we're going to work into the end of the second. So we'll just work a double crochet. We'll find the next row end and double crochet and then the next row end and double crochet. So it's super, super simple when we're working those rows. Um, you just work one into each stitch. We're now onto these three half treble rows, which is half double in the US. And this is going to be slightly different. You may want to, again, play around with this, but as a general rule, we're going to work two into one stitch, one into the next, two into the uh, next row end. Um, and that just kind of evens it out because we don't want to have too many stitches if your whole piece of work um, is all half treble crochets. If we did two in each one, it would just uh, become quite ruffled. So the way that we can get around that is to do uh, two double crochets, one double crochet, two double crochets, etc. So we want to work into this very first section here. So we want to work into the top of the stitch and then we also want to work into the stitch, so into the body of the stitch, which is this section just here. Now, if we go through, you can see it looks like we have um, two posts on that hook. So you can come through and then we'll work onto the next one. Now, this is actually a chain two from the beginning of this row. So I'm going to work into the center of that chain two with a double crochet. And then I'm going to find the top of the next stitch and work into there and then into the body of the stitch. So making it so that we have two of those posts, bars, legs, whichever you want to call it. And then we have worked along there nicely. Um, and you can see here that the, the stitches are a little bit longer when we've worked into certain sections of it. But as I say, you will not see that if you are using the same, the same color. So now we are on to the treble crochets, which is double crochets in the US. And we want to work two double crochets into each of these because that will work out nicely. So again, we can see the top of the stitch here, which we can work into. And then we see the body of the stitch. So just as the half treble, we want to find the body of the stitch and then work into the stitch like so. And then find the top of the stitch again and into the body of the stitch. Now obviously some of these will be chains. So um, you just have to be aware of that, that each one um, going down every other row might look slightly different. So I'm now at the end of this uh, row and I still haven't done a stitch into the body of the stitch so I'll just do that now. And remember I said we're going to do three double crochets into the corner. So I've just done one which is going down the side. I'll do another one into that same space which is going to class as the corner. So you might want to mark that stitch so just so you're extra sure where that is. And then I'm going to go into that stitch again and that classes as this edge. Now we're working into the underside of the foundation chain. So this is nice and easy to work into. 
we simply work into each one of those chains all the way across until we get to that next corner. Okay, so I've now got to my very last stitch. I'm going to do a double crochet, uh, which is classing as along this corner. A double crochet, which will be the corner, which you will mark your stitch. And then another double crochet, which will go along this edge. Um, if I was doing the chain method, I would do double crochet, chain either one or chain two depending on how crisp you want that corner to be and then a double crochet so as long as you are being consistent on where you are placing your stitches uh, this should work out absolutely fine so we've just done the double crochet which is classing as the side so we now want to find the top of the stitch to work into with our double crochet. Then we find the body of the stitch and then the top of the stitch and then the body and then the top of the stitch and you're simply going to work that all the way round until you get to your corner again. So go ahead, pause the video. Um, if you're working this alongside with me, then you want to work all the way round until you get to your very last stitch. Okay, so once you've worked your way all the way around, you can then go ahead and insert your hook into that very first stitch, slip stitch, and then tie off. Obviously, if you want to continue with the same color for the border, you can go ahead and do that. Uh, but I think as a general rule, people would tend to change their colour um, for the border at this point. So if you have marked your corners, you will have all your corners nicely marked. You will have an even number of stitches on the top, bottom and then the sides. So you will want to make sure that you check that before you go ahead and work any more rounds to this. But I hope this helps with the general rules of how you're going to place your stitches. Um, into the ends of the, these rows. Now obviously there's always <laughs> instances where you might have to switch it up slightly um, if you're working a border for example which has a certain amount of um, repeats in it then you might want to calculate that as you're going across uh, but this is really good to use as a general rule for adding a uh, or preparing for a border. So I really hope that you have enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, make sure that you give me a thumbs up. Also, don't forget to leave me a comment in the comments section because I absolutely love to read them. If you use this method, then tag me on Instagram at Bella Coco Crochet so I can see because I love to see your projects. And also don't forget to subscribe and click the bell button to be kept up to date with all of my latest videos. Thank you so much for watching and I shall see you again next time. Bye.